Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. So I was not planning on going live tonight, but I decided that it would be kind of fun to do so. Um, so I figure I'll hang out for just a couple minutes, give some people a chance to join, and then we will see what's going on. I'm um, I'm really excited because I picked up a couple of new bottles. Sorry, I'm just, I actually just jumped into this like immediately, and I probably should have done some setup in the first place, but whatever. So <clears throat> I picked up the Karchis, Lafroig Karchis, uh, the Warehouse One edition, which I am extremely excited to drink. I actually didn't even realize that this was out yet. Apparently it came out like very recently and uh, there were none on the shelf except for this one. So I picked it up immediately. And as I was, uh, as I was leaving, um, I threw a picture up on discord and somebody mentioned, they were like, Hey, in the background, is that the Bunaabin 12 cast strength? Uh, holy crap, you should pick that up. And so, of course, I went and picked that up because I have a problem. <laughs> hey, Jason, what's going on? So let me bring up the... Um, I'm on StreamYard, and what I'd like to do is I would like to invite anybody here. Man, YouTube is having a problem. Cheers from the North Woods. Nice. Um, what I'd like to do is take 30 seconds to actually just do something here. I'm going to grab the like you can join me here and i'm going to throw it in the live stream chat and pin that and i want you guys to you know consider joining because why not we'll just have a conversation um i'm not going to be doing this for super long but i do want to crack these bottles so hey houston houston i called you houston um i did mean to make this public steve yep <laughs> thank you appreciate you uh checking up on me though i do often make mistakes Steve, Steve always has my back. All right, so let's do this. Let's post that, and we're going to pin this. Apologize to anybody watching this in the future. I'm sure this is riveting. All right, so there is a StreamYard link in the chat. If anybody feels like joining, feel free. Um, I'm sipping on some Buna, uh, some Bowmore 15 at the moment, because I was actually just over in Discord having a, a private chat. Um, and... Uh, just figured I'd, I'd kind of end that and come over here. So, hmm. oh, got 23 people in here already. That's great. Why aren't you guys all watching Dungeons and Drams? Come on. You pretend like you don't want to be nerds with me, but you know you do. It's more fun than you think. Um, anyway, all right. So, hey, Bourbon Bites. Hey, uh, actually, I, I'm going to do like everybody else does, because why not? So, hey, Jason. Hey, Northwoods. Hey, Zophir. Hey, Steve. Hey, Red. <laughs> I get why people do that, but it's always funny to me because it just takes so much time. But I guess you guys like hearing your own names, so I do too. Everybody likes hearing their own name. Mm. Kick that bad boy back. All right, let's drink a little water. Now, I'm thinking I need to have the Buna Oven 12 cast strength first because both of these are, well, the, the Buna Oven is 55.1%. Um, the Karchis is 52.2%, but I mean, we're talking Lafroig. It's going to be a little smoky, uh, and I feel like that one needs to be last. Mm. Steve, thanks. Um, all right, Alexander, nice to see you. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and open up this Buna oven. Isla Single Malt Scotch. Ah, whiskey. Now, if you guys remember, the regular Buna oven 12 was one of my favorite whiskeys um, in the last couple of years. And I still stand by that. I think it's just absolutely fantastic. It's fantastic. All right, we've got Colin, who looks like he's joining. I'll give him a minute to get his video camera working, and then uh, we'll invite him in. Love it. I'm glad that people are joining. All right, let's get a, a nice little bottle pop going. Hold on. Eh, a little weak. It kind of kind of opened right away. Yeah, nah, a little weak. But that's okay. We'll forgive it. As long as it tastes good. Alrighty. So, so far not smelling much. So I'm going to invite him here just in case he didn't intend on... Uh... No, he's still on mute. All right. So, Colin, if you uh, if you get your video working, then I'll, I'll drop you in. All right. So what are you guys all drinking tonight? I'm very curious. All right. Interesting. Um... I remember the Buna Hobbit. You know what I'm going to do? Because this is an ad-libbed little live stream. Um, I'm going to jump in here. And I'm going to go look up my old tasting notes from the Buna Hobbit and see how this compares. Because I think that sounds like fun. I actually am planning on 
breaking my whole little summer of streaming and not doing real videos, uh, probably to film something on the Lefroy Karchus. But doing a little first taste sounds sounds like a good time to me. <clears throat> oh, is Steve not feeling well? Oh, that's too bad. I didn't uh, I didn't pick up on that. Oh well. All right, let's see. So my notes on the original Boonabin were that it was fruity, florally, like roses, clean and crisp, more in line with a space side than you'd think. Maybe some saltiness, but it's not prevalent for me. And then the taste was sweetness, like brown sugar, malty, vanilla, oak, pear, apple. All right, so um, Colin, I see a whole bunch of color. <laughs> I think Colin just wants to be part of the party. That's all right. All right, so the nose here is not at all in line with what I just read. And actually, looking at this, it says intense flavors of chocolate, spice, and dried fruits. So is this just very different or something? So this is the 2021 year edition as well. Uh, Non-chill filtered, natural color, 55.1%. Oh, there's Colin. All right. Hey, Colin's uh, shoulder. <laughs> hey, Russell Reserve. Anyway, all right. I'm gonna have a little uh, little taste of this. It's the middle of the night here now, so I'm not drinking anymore. Uh, but I had Glenn White, Glenn Wevis, uh, Seven Seals, and uh, Kieran eighteen earlier. Cool. That's a good spread. I don't know Glenn Wevis. Glenn Wevis. I don't know. It sounds almost familiar, but I, I can't place it. Let's do this. All right. Anyway, cheers, everybody. Hmm. Okay. The taste is a little bit more familiar. Um, poured some Buna 18. Nice. Nice. That's great. I did see a couple of different Bunas on the shelf. Um, the uh, Toichida, I think, to, to Tochida, I think that's how you say it. And then Sturadu. Um, I, I have pronunciations in this file I have in front of me, but I don't think either one's right. Um, either way. That's great. Buna 18. I would love to try that. I'll need to keep an eye out for it. Yeah, so it's funny. I walked into the store, and like I said, I, I actually was go. All right, I see a thumbs up. Whoops. No. Well, you know what, Colin? Whenever you're ready to talk, just throw yourself off, uh, off mute, and you'll be good to go. All right. Anyway. So I walked into the store, and I was actually going to follow up on something with the, the three-chord barrel pick that I did, which, by the way, I still have several bottles left. So if anybody's interested in purchasing the three-chord single barrel, I was actually just talking to somebody, and, and um, I realized I have more repeat buyers <laughs> than anything, because people who buy it love it, and they buy it again. So if anybody's curious, just send me an uh, email at thewhiskeydickdic at gmail.com, and we'll figure something out. Or you can go to my website, thewhiskeydictionary.com, and there's a link there. But anyway, so I went in to do a little business, and the guy I was looking to talk to was not there. So I walked to the shelf, as I do, and I was checking out the scotch, and I ran into the Lefroy. And it was the only one on the shelf, and that alone says a lot. But then I realized, I'm like, wait a minute, this is the Karchus. Why is this out? I didn't even think this was out yet. And uh, so I grabbed it, and it was $109. And this particular place does tend to have higher prices. So I was not, like, psyched about it, but I'm also like, this might be the only time I see this. So I, I was like, okay. And I looked it up, and it was like 100, 100 bucks uh, around. So I'm like, an extra 10 bucks for the exclusivity. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with this. So I pick it up, and I, I bought it. And like I said earlier, uh, somebody put, mentioned the Buna and 12 cast strength. And so I ended up walking back into the store after seeing the picture, and then I picked that up. So I ended up spending 200 bucks out of nowhere today. But uh, that's what Patreon's, uh, that's what Patreon is for. So the ability to, to splurge a little bit for things that I think are going to be tasty. And so far, this is pretty tasty. You know, it's funny. I'm realizing I'm a little out of practice. I haven't been, uh, I've been drinking plenty of whiskey, but I haven't been doing it with the idea of filming. So it's, well, thank you, John and Jason. Appreciate that. Look at that. Three chords tasty, three chords delicious. You guys are the best. Thank you. Mm. I'd be curious with the Buna CS uh, that's not a neck pour. Yeah, me too. Uh, my last 12 neck pour was just okay, but after a day of breathing, it was excellent. Totally with you. I think um, I think that this will probably open up just like the other one did. 
All right, so Glenn Wivis is quite a new distiller. Okay, that makes me feel better. I always feel bad when I don't know something because it's kind of like what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> it's just know all this shit. So Glenn Wivis is quite a new distillery not far from uh, Inverness that was crowdfunded and is community owned. And this was their second release. Okay. Am I saying that right? Glenn Wivis? Kind of looks good. I like that with the W in the in the center. Um, anyway. This is growing on me immediately, but they're right. This is very heavy on chocolate, like huge chocolate. The cast strength, um, at least on this neck pour, so everything's going to change by the time I actually review this. The neck pour here is very, it drinks pretty hot. The alcohol is like pretty prevalent, but it's not, it doesn't bite so much. It just kind of sits right in your throat a bit. Um, but overall, mouthfeel and everything, it's a little bit oily in a good way. <clears throat> it tastes very chocolatey. It's a bit malty. Hey, y'all nerds, remember to hit thumbs up. Thank you, Emily. Very good. Hmm, I'm enjoying this. Very tasty. Now, if you'll forgive me, I need to actually get up and grab one more glass because I didn't plan on drinking that bow more. Uh, so give me 30 seconds. Because I have a whole stack of glasses. As one would expect... All right. What's the best store in Massachusetts? I, I mean, there's a couple, right? So the one for me, there's there's three that come to mind. Um, there is Julio's Liquors, which is in Westboro, uh, Central Mass. Then there is Gordon's, which is in Newton, I believe. And then uh, Norfolk Wine and Spirits, which I'm, is probably in Norfolk. Um, yes, it is. So Norfolk Wine and Spirits is another really, uh, no, that's not the one I'm thinking of. Is it? Yeah, that is the one I'm thinking of. It's very unassuming from the front. Um, much like my ex-girlfriend, but she, uh, anyway, it's very good. Uh, they have very good prices. They have rare stuff and it's weird. Like you walk in and it's just, it's almost like walking into a hoarder's house if whiskey was what they were hoarding. So like Matt from the Whiskey Crusaders house, right? <laughs> but everything's for sale. Uh, and they have rare stuff. You actually occasionally have to just move things out of the way. Um, I remember when the Red Breast, um, was it 29, 25, something like that? They, they did a, uh, it, no, it wasn't, was it? I'm trying to remember what it was. Red Breast 27. That's what it was. When the Red Breast 27 came out, I found it there for 350 bucks, and I remember hemming and hawing over it and being like, ah, oh, do I want to spend this much money, guy? You guys know, probably know I'm, like, like notorious for being cheap when I buy whiskey. Like, I've been doing this for seven and a half years, and I still refuse to spend money on whiskey because it just doesn't seem like... I, I'd rather keep the mentality of, like, I don't have infinite money to buy whiskey. Like, I, I mean, some of my viewers do. Um but most of you don't, and I don't either. So anyway, I was hemming and hawing over this, and now I'm super regretting it because it's available for like $500 if you can even find it. So that kind of hurts. Uh, hello, Bill. Hey, Donner Pass. Um, greetings, blah, blah, blah. All right, cool. So just keep in mind, if anybody's interested, um, I'm going to probably hang on until about 10 o'clock and because uh, I'm not going to interfere with... Um, Clifton stream. But if anybody wants to, there is a link right in the chat pinned to the top for you to come join me here on StreamYard. And I'd love to just have a quick little conversation. That'd be fun. Um, I think this would be a, a fun thing to do. Um, I did not plan on live streaming tonight. So if anybody was wondering if they had missed anything, no, there was no planned live stream. Uh, I do have a planned live stream with a couple of channels that you guys know and love. And we'll be doing it soonish. But it, it fell through a few weeks ago because 4th of July, uh, I was planning it for the week of 4th of July without even thinking about the fact that I wasn't even around. And then we put it off a couple more weeks and now now I'm here. So um, we'll do it soon enough. But all right, for those just joining, I'm drinking the Boonabin Cast Strength 12 right now. And I'm about to switch over to the, the new Lefroy Karchus. So very, very excited for that. All right, let's kick this one back. Overall, this has been pleasant. Uh, it's about, I want to say it's probably 15 to $20 more than the regular Boonab and 12. I very different flavor. Um, oddly enough, it's, it's almost like it's not even the same whiskey. So I'm not sure what I think about this yet, but it's still very much the neck pour. So we're going to see what evolves over time. <laughs> Burben says, what a dick. Yep. I sure am. 
Uh, it'd be fun to do a planned live stream where whomever wants to join. Yes, totally. I actually, I will make that a thing. Um, this is totally just, just, uh, what do you call it? Yeah. <laughs> Love a rambling dick stream. Thank you, Sawyer fam. Appreciate that. Let's throw your, your little face up here with your yellow. Um, I do appreciate the super chat always helps. So interesting thing. If you guys remember the last time I did the Lefroy Karchis, these little guys come in the Lefroy packets, and many of you will know and recognize these because we're all peat heads in, in some shape or form, or you will become one. If you are not, then I encourage you to, to try. And um, they come with these little codes, and each one of these codes gets you like a single square foot of space uh, on their you know land or whatever. It doesn't matter. I have a lot of these. I want to say like 71. <laughs> um, and I only know that from looking at my points earlier tonight. And I had asked on that stream if anybody has one or if anybody just doesn't want theirs to just send me the code. And I'm going to like just overload my account with these. So I have a lot of them now. And now I have another one. So I'm, I tried to put it in earlier and it was uh, giving me some trouble. But I'm going to do that later. One of these days I'll make it out to Lafroy and they'll probably be like, oh my God, it's the whiskey dick. He owns like seven acres of Lafroy land. <laughs> so. Lafroig land. I would totally go visit that theme park. All right. Let's see what else we've got. So I'm I'm like beyond excited about this. I really hope it's good. One of the most richly flavored of all scotch whiskeys, blah, blah, blah. Let's see if they uh, say anything specific about this. I'm not going to read this out loud unless it's relevant because that'll sound terrible. Um, exclusively matured in first field makers, Mark bourbon casks and solely aged in our landmark warehouse that proudly bears our name. Each cask reflects the unique maritime character. This is the part that matters. Each cask reflects the unique maritime character of Warehouse One. Its exposure to the elements lends a shoreline astringency to the classic Lafroig flavors of peat, smoke, and salt. Uh, with unrivaled nuance from its rare blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. So what I will probably do when I do my actual video on this, which I may break my silence and put this video out like next week. Um, and I will likely do kind of a comparison between this and, say, like, the regular 10. Because, ooh, that was good. Oh, that was good. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It's just like, yeah, it's not coming across how crystal clear that looks. It's like looking in the Caribbean Ocean. It's just see-through and glorious and makes you think of fun. All right. Uh, you only get one plot per person. Ah, that's too bad. I've had mine since 1996 and visited in 97. After that, you just build up points, and what you can do with them has changed over the years. Okay, well, that's good to know, Andrew. Ruining my dreams. I figured if I bought enough of these, maybe I could actually own, like, a part of the warehouse. <laughs> They'd be like, we don't have any more land to give them. Just start giving them barrels. Ooh, that's good. It smells like Lafrog, though. A little bit more delicate than a typical Lafroig, actually. A little, a little bit of candy um, sweetness going on. That's interesting. Oh, absolutely, totally. Thank you for the comment. That's very, that's very insightful, Google. <laughs> oh, stupid. Anyway, all right. So let, <laughs> let's see what we've got here. Yeah, man, this is like all candy all the way. This, this almost doesn't even smell smoky. That's really cool. All right, let me ask you guys an honest question, and I need answers from all of you alcoholics out there. Do you ever just, like, sit totally away from your, your whiskey or anything else, and all of a sudden you just taste or smell whiskey? Like, it's it's almost like more than a craving. Um, so for me, a, a perfect example of this is in my younger years, I had so many Jack and Cokes that, like, I couldn't drink a Coke without it tasting like a Jack and Coke. And sometimes I'll just be, like, sitting here, and I'll just be, like, it's almost like I have a craving for a specific flavor of whiskey. Well, earlier tonight, I, I hope I'm not crazy, but earlier tonight I had this exact flavor that I'm I'm smelling here on uh, like craving it. And, and that's very odd that it ended up this way. Because when I tell you that this does not smell like a Lafroig, it does not smell like anything like a Lafroig. Oh, you know what? Actually, I don't know who this guy is, but he put a little whiskey glass in there. So I'm going to assume that that's actually relevant. So I don't know. Been wondering how this compares to the 16, but is that also 100% first fill bourbon? Um, let me double check again. I think it said first fill. Yep. 
Uh, so Karchus 2022 is exclusively matured in first film maker's mark bourbon casks. Okay. So that would explain some of this this very like sweetie sweetness. During the workday, I work from home uh, as of COVID. I'll go downstairs and smell a few bottles from time to time. Yeah, I do that too. Does Laphroaig smell a lot different than Ardbeg? Um, that's a good question. Actually, you know what? I'm going to answer your question. I would say typically they, they both smell very, hopefully you can smell, uh, hear me. Let me just move my Johnny Walker red from its place of glory here. All right. So I'm going to grab the Ardbeg 10. Ooh, remind me to tell you about the Ardbeg thing. All right, so I got the Ardbeg 10. I've got the Karchus from last year still here, which that's kind of surprising because it's delicious. And then I've got the 10. All right. So I'm just going to smell these. Um, I suspect that they do smell similar, although I, I feel like I've always said that Laphroaig 10 was kind of a like a one-note thing, uh, like a one-trick pony. It just smells like smoke and just tastes like smoke, whereas Ardbeg was a little bit more um, complex. All right. Um, I mean, it smells pretty smoky. I, I get I'm not pouring it, so it's not going to be perfect. But I think if I compare them both in the same way, it should at least be a good comparison. So now we've got the Ardbeg 10. <clears throat> I don't know about you guys. I I don't love this style of box. Because when you go to pull it out, it's always just like, oh, no, you can't get out. And I get that that's on purpose. But, you know, if I want my whiskey, I want to get it now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, they're similar. Our bag's stronger um, in smell and smoke. And neither one of these smell anything like the new Karchus. Uh, the new Karchus smells much more in line with... It's just so it's so delicate and like not overpowering, and that makes me a little sad because it's not what I'm expecting. But I've I've also learned over the years that that going into whiskey tasting and nosing with expectations is a great way to get let down. Um, so I'm gonna try not to. So in terms of peak character, they they are different. It, like if I had to describe Ardbeg versus Laphroaig, I often refer to it as Laphroaig is like cigar ash, and Ardbeg is like campfire smoke. Whereas, like, yes, they're obviously similar, but there is a difference if you're smelling them at all. So, ooh, sipping on a Laphroaig lore right now alongside a quarter cask lore. Nice. Is perhaps my favorite Laphroaig ever. Oh, alongside a quarter cask. I was going to say, when did, like, when did they make a quarter cask lore? Um, perhaps my favorite Laphroaig ever. Great side by side. Yeah, the quarter cask is awesome. Totally agree. I actually don't know that I've had more than just a sample of the lore. Um, <laughs> well, having no sense of smell would definitely help to smell some of the things that a lot of people turn away from. Anyway, all right, so let's, uh, I've been kind of putting this off. Let me go ahead and have a taste of this. So cheers, everybody. Thanks for joining on such uh, late notice. Mm. Ooh, okay. I, I will be honest. Oh, wow. Wow, that keeps going. It's like eating a hot wing. It uh, it fakes you out right away. This this is very interesting, actually. I was about to be very disappointed, um, especially after the Karchus from last year, which was like a PX Sherry or something like that, a, a Sherry of some sort. Um, this is good. This is really good. It's very, very, uh, it's only 52%. I'm trying to decide if what I'm tasting is just a very strong peat smell, uh, peat taste, or if it's alcohol. And I think it's, I think it's alcohol. It's Island Night at my house as well. Kalila, Art 12, Art Big 10. Um, David, thank you for being a, uh, a member, actually, for as long as you have. I appreciate that. Um, all right, so it's Island Night at my house as well. Kalila 12, Ardbeg 10, Laphroaig 10. You know, that's a that's a pretty good one. I Are you starting with the Kalila 12? Because I got to tell you, of those three, um, I would say Kalila 12 is my least favorite. Laphroaig 10 is right in the middle, and Ardbeg 10 is my favorite of those three. Totally with you, Alexander. The uh, 2021 Karchus was amazing. Totally agree. This one I'm not calling amazing yet. It is good, and it has very high potential, and I'm thinking that as this one opens up a little bit, it may very well get real good. 
it is not complicated at all though it's light on the peat uh as far as like just any other lafroig most of them taste very heavy peat this one does not um it's it really just actually this is even more one trick pony than than the uh regular lafroig 10. it's pretty much just sweet and peat and that's it um I don't know. I really hope this one gets better. I'm sure it will. Honestly, I have enough faith in Lafroig that I think that this one will get better as it opens up a bit. And it's really hard to it's hard to judge a neck pour. I'm an Ardbeg fan. Never had the Kalula before. Just found a, a bottle today. All right. Well, it's good to hear that they're uh, coming back to the shelves. I had a really hard time finding the Kalila 12 last time I was looking for it. It was uh, I actually went to at least five different places uh, before I finally. I think I, I think I finally bought one off like Drizzly or something like that because uh, it was just no you know what it was <laughs> I used Drizzly to find where they had it and then I went and drove there so but I had I remember having to drive a while mm. so anyway um it's funny I, I'm just starting to finally get a, a couple extra people coming in here um, and I'm about to sign off so I know this has been a super super fast one and that was kind of the intent is I really just wanted to do kind of a first tasting of both of these especially uh, the Buna Haben 12. I've just wanted to try the cast strength for a while. That has promise. The, the This Laphroaig, uh, the jury's very much still out on that one. Um, anyway, well, I guess thank you all for joining. <laughs> Sorry to drag you in here. Uh, but you should all go over to Clifton's live stream on Bourbon Bites. He's um, he's doing some sort of interview today. He he does a lot of interviews, actually, and, and it's often very interesting to hear the distillers talk about their stuff. Let me talk, actually, about... Three things, real quick before before you all leave. Um, number one, it just I have to because it it's like my passion project. Dungeons and Drams. Even if you're not into Dungeons and Dragons, just go check out the channel. It's very easy to find if you go to my channel page. It's right there. If you just search Dungeons and Drams, D R A M S, you'll find it. Um, it's a Dungeons and Dragons game between myself, uh, Jason from the Mash and Drum, Clifton from Bourbon Bites, Ed from the Rocket Review, and my friend Molly. And we all play D and D together, and we drink, and we have this fun little uh, gimmick that we call Risky Whiskey, where if you don't like what you rolled, you can t shoot back whatever you're drinking, and you can re-roll it. <laughs> so it's really fun. Um, so that's fun. That's a that's a fun little passion project. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about real quick. So I am talking with some of you guys may have heard this week that there was there is a distillery in New Hampshire that is uh, producing whiskey using what essentially is boiled crab water. <laughs> so yes, exactly what I said. Um, uh, anyway, so if you want to see that, I'm going to go to their distillery and I'm going to film. I'm actually, I've been talking to them. I think I'm going to go there on July 23rd and then I'm going to film and edit and I'll probably release it the following week. Um, but the idea is that there's this invasive green crab species in off the coast of New Hampshire and they fish a whole bunch of these up and they're, they're just everywhere. Apparently they take them, they, you know, boil them and then they use that water and they, you know, you can eat the, the crab, but they use that water to help make their whiskey. It's a wild concept and apparently it tastes pretty good. I don't know. They're selling out like crazy. So I'm actually very excited to do this and I think it's just going to be cool. Plus it's been a while since I've been in a distillery. It's been pretty much since before COVID. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to just do this and film and kind of get to flex that bit. Um, the last piece. Uh, so actually, I guess that's kind of it. Uh, yeah, so only two things, D&D &D and crab juice. <laughs> All right, everybody go over to Clifton's stream and have an awesome rest of your night, and thank you for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. Cheers. <laughs>